Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In the video today, we're going to have a little bit of a look at a, just a concept idea about how we can use natural language to do data mapping of data between various formats with logic apps using ChatGTP. So the background of this, um, it's something I've wondered a little bit about before about, um, you know, we, at the minute we have a lot of talk about co-pilots for development of various Azure resources and with um, Logic Apps, we have the data mapper currently being um, a, a new project in the Logic App space, and it kind of made me wonder a little bit about, um, you know, the data visual data map as a like a thing that's been around for years. But actually, has, has the problem space changed a little bit? Should we kind of reinvent how we do data mapping? And and I kind of wondered. Um, somebody said something in the bar the other day, which made me wonder if we could actually do just natural language data map and how far are we able from doing this. So I, I just knocked up a little bit of a demo um, earlier. Um, I showed it to Sandro and Sandro was pretty impressed with it. So I know if Sandro likes what he sees, it's um, quite interesting. So he insisted that I sort of do some stuff to share this demo with people. And hopefully it gives people ideas of other things we could do leveraging AI to help us deliver logic app solutions. So we have a look. Um, so if I drop out my slide here, we have a quick look at Postman. So my, my example here, I've got this input XML. So it's about a person called Mike Stevenson. He plays at a golf club called High Gosford Park, and he's had some golf scores. Not a bad golfer from the looks of it. So he's shooting just over par, and he's had these, these results on each day. So if I make a call, you'll notice the URL. I'm calling the Logic app. I'm going to do some transformation and I'm going to get a result back in a second here. So let's take a look at some of the things that have happened. So the first thing is we've now got a full name field where it's combined the first name and last name. The golf club's been changed. So we've had some kind of mapping from High Gosford Park to Parklands. And then in the scores, instead of just having a date and a score, we've got the date formats being changed to be rather than year, month, day, day, month, year. And we've also calculated a net score. So it looks like there's been some kind of calculation from gross score to net score. So let's have a look how we actually implement this uh, this mapping. So here, um, over in my, my golf demo, we can see, um, so if we have a look when this comes up, so you can see I've got an HTTP request and I've got this compose shape here. So I've built a message which says, if I have this message as an input and then I'm just putting the message that gets sent to the logic app. And then I've got a list of instructions. So I've said, can I have an output as JSON? Can you change the surname to last name? Notice that I haven't really specified the proper field name. I've just said change it from surname to last name. So you can see last name here. We had surname up here. Um, I've said, can you create a new field called full name, which concatenates first name and last name with a space? I've said, if the golf club's high gossip of park change to parklands, convert the dates to that format, um, add a field called gross score, which is equal to the score value, calculate a new field called net score, um, in, in the scores array, which is the, gr the gross score minus my handicap, which is 7. So that would be if I scored 72, I would get 65. And then what I'm doing further down is I'm making a call out to chat, chat GTP and I'm passing that compose shapes that's going to include my input data and my instructions. Call that and then I'm basically going to just return a response, which is, so over in Postman here, this is going to give me my my person results. So if you think about what we've done there, we've just natural language described some transformation of the data, we've sent it to chat GTP and it's given us the data back. That's quite cool really. Um, and there's no visual designer spending ages getting schemas, dragging them across. We've just told it what to do with the data. Now the question is what else can I do with this? So here we've got a slightly different logic app I'm going to call where instead of having the compose shape, I can actually just pass the example data and the instructions. So here I've got, if I've got this as an input, here's what I want you to do with it. So it's kind of the same thing, but the key bit I've said at the bottom is give me a liquid map. So if I run that, 
the logic app's now going to return me a liquid um, sample that I can actually use. So if you notice here, I could actually take this and use it in a logic app to do the transformation for me. So not only can it transform the data, it can give me code to transform the data. But then what about if I want to make difference? So here we've now got, here's the person again, but can I have the data as a CSV file? And I've also included this without any waffle because sometimes ChatGD puts some explanation about what it did, which I don't really want. So if I run that, you can see I've now got a CSV file with all that data in it. Um, you know, simple transformation, but it, it's created that for me. Sandro then, when he saw it, he's like, I'm having this problem with the, the map. Um, so the problem he was having was um, doing some calculations based on these costs by country. So we, we said, right, well, let's try it out, see what we can do. So here I've got um, Sandro's XML and we said some instructions. So we said, right, we want to map it to Jason. Um, can you add a field calculating the age from the date of birth? So we can execute it. So I'll just run this so we can see what happened. So here you can see we've got back um, date of birth, we've got an age, we've said, can we add the GPS coordinates for the address field based on the zip code? So what it's actually done is added this GPS element here and it's given me the longitude and latitude, and we checked, and that's actually the post there, uh, the GPS and Google Maps for that postcode area next to where Sandra lives, which is quite good. So that that actually did a you know kind of a data look up. Then we said right in the phone calls array. So you notice here we've got all these phone calls. We said, can you do a look up for the country for each phone call based on the phone number and add a country field? So in our output here, we've actually got country Portugal based on this phone number, country Moldova. Again, another quite cool little look up just by telling it to do it. Then we said in the bit Sandra was struggling with, can you do a summary of the cost grouped by country and round it to two decimal places? So if you go down the bottom here, you'll see it actually added this cost summary element and it calculated how much these cost values were for each of the countries that we've called. And then I said, you know, just give me it as a JSON output, um, get rid of any explanation. That's pretty cool. You know, when, when you think about what we could do here, so that's plain English, just explaining what you want the map to do. I could be a BA um, writing this like this this text to do a mapping um, and, and offload that work from a developer having to write loads of code to do it. We just tell it what to do. So one of the demos I've got that I haven't fully got working yet, but I think a good one to play around with is the same golf demo, but actually um, I've said, right, can we get it as a positional file? And I've said field one should be the full name, should be 20 characters with um, a dot used for pad characters. Field two should be the score with four characters with leading zeros. Same for the net score. The field four should be the date, 10 characters. Um, can you concatenate each row? Can you only return the data in the result set? So if I run that, you can see, um, it'll come back in a second, and, and we've got this data set here. So there's a, it, it's not perfect. You know, there's a, there's a few things I probably need to get right about the text to make it get rid of these. We can see we've got the pad characters here. We've got the 20 characters, I think it is, here for the name. I need to get it to get rid of this. So sometimes it's popping that bit in, so I need to get rid of the waffle again. Um, but actually, you can see that's quite an interesting way of um, being able to get that data from that XML format to a positional flat file. And so the question here is, what does this really mean for um, for logic apps and, and what they're doing with data mapping? So what you know, the data map is something we need. We've needed it for years. But actually, if we reinvent how what data mapping means, maybe that means we could have a mapping service. As part of a you know either an integration space integration account or part of the logic app ecosystem where we can just have this plain language and then we throw the data and the, the instructions at, at the AI service and it transforms the data for us and then 
the idea could be the more people that are using it, the more it trains the model, the better it understands how to transform data. And we can just start writing this, this, you know, English language description. And maybe in Logic Apps, we could load up loads of example files to train it for our map. And then we could keep them as tests. So we would modify our instructions and we would just go run it against all these, these examples. Here's what we expect it to look like. Tick, 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 everything's good. And then in the Logic Apps, we could just, you know, instead of me, HTTP in the chat, GTP, maybe we have a connector that calls an Azure service. And we say, here's our input data, here's our map instructions, and it just goes and does it. Or maybe, maybe we abstract the instructions to be in something like an integration space so they're easy to change outside of the, the workflow. Um, Hopefully this is a really interesting demo for people. Um, I'm hoping it kind of makes people think about other things you could do um, and maybe we can bounce ideas around. Feel free to, to drop me a LinkedIn or a Twitter or something if you want to have a chat on these ideas. But uh, thanks for listening and take care.